and the spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run forever! And you know what that means? It's time for the Toy News Act for your news of the week that interested me, that hopefully interests you, and it's a big Toy News week. So big, in fact, we're going to have two episodes of the Toy News this week covering it all. Didn't want to put it all in a two-hour video for everybody, or whatever it would be. Thought I'd split it up, and that's what we're going to do this weekend. So this could be part one. Make sure you look out for part number two. But of course, we're going to start off the Toy News with a little housekeeping action. Of course, this episode of the Toy News, sponsored by good friends of the channel, jaystoysandgames.com. Head over to jaystoysandgames.com. Use discount code KYLE. Save yourself 15%. Oh my goodness, 15%. Not 10, 15%. Got to get a deal. Check it out over there. They got everything under the sun, and they ship worldwide. Check it out, jaystoysandgames.com. Sponsor of this very video. So shout out to Jay's Toys and Games. But we're not done. Patreon giveaway. Month of September. What do we got? It's the Honky Tonk Man, one of the all-time greats, and of course, the greatest intercontinental champion of all time. That is the giveaway on Patreon for September. Check out the Patreon. Support the channel. Tons of content over there every single day. Have a new Patreon-exclusive Q&A going up later this week, so get in over there. Check it out. Link in the description down below. But like I said, two toy news is this week. This is part one, and it's a big one right here. We're going to start off hot. We're starting off from the couch. We're starting with our friend Todd McFarlane, and this could change the channel forever. This news I'm about to give here, as most do know, Thursday this week, as I'm filming this a day, two days ago, what is time? Uh, the Kickstarter for the Medieval Spawn finally came to an end. It was going on shortly after San Diego Comic-Con. It was about a month, something like that. And you guys know me. I always say, I'm going to wait till the last minute. I don't want these companies holding my money any longer than I need them to have. Said, you know what? Going to wait till the last minute. Going to wait till the last minute. Well, unfortunately, yes, Todd, what? Oh, Todd, Todd's giving me a look. and It looks like your toes are looking at me. But you're looking at me. Todd's looking hard at me here. So... Unfortunately for me, waiting till the last minute, set the alarm on my phone to get in there, you know, an hour before, whatever it was. Uh, unfortunately, Todd, just let me finish. Let me tell my story. Uh, unfortunately for me, I had my phone almost dead. So I put it on the charger, which isn't in my office. It's around the corner in kind of the living room type area. Put my phone on the charger and I had a meeting. Well, I think we know where this is going. I totally forgot in space and it did not get to be a part of the Kickstarter. I was going to buy the three, Todd. I swear. Todd, what are you doing? What are you doing? What? Oh, are you, you're kidding me. You're going to leave? You're, you're just going to walk on out of here. Uh, Todd, come on. Uh, come on, Todd. Uh, Todd McFarland, ladies and gentlemen, always with his toes. You can at least bring your socks and your pants. You're gonna, if you're leaving, you better take those with you. Oh, come on. I forgot. Can you open it back up for me? Can you open it up? No. All right. Well, Todd's leaving. Todd, you're leaving. All right. Well, hey, good seeing you. What? Mark Summers, you too? No, Mark, you're going with Todd. All right. You two get out of here. I don't need Todd. I don't need you, Mark. You guys will come to your senses. They always come to their senses. You know how quick I could get Bobby Vala on this couch? You know how quick Brian Flynn would get on this couch? Steve Osier, Jeremy Padauer. I don't need either of you. So, Todd and Mark off their merry way. Todd, I, I don't know how far he's going to get without pants and without shoes and socks on, but we'll see. Todd's a, a innovative guy, but I did forget, unfortunately, and I offended Todd McFarlane, and I offended myself, and I let myself down. I'm the first to admit it, but I did miss out on those Kickstarters, so not sure if I'll get those. I don't know what I'll end up doing, but I did miss out on those three. Very unfortunate times. I can hear them. It's nice the dogs don't bark, though. Lamey, it's nice you didn't bark on the way out. Dog Lemmy right over here, of course. Uh, but that's what it goes. That's that's the way it goes right there. So unfortunately, uh, no Kickstarter McFarland for me. Hopefully, uh, I figure it out in the future. So we'll see. Stay tuned to that ever ongoing saga. And will we ever see Todd and Mark again? Some say hopefully not. Some say hopefully so. 
we'll see what ends up happening there. But speaking of McFarlane, he's not here, so we can really throw him under the bus if we need to here. Uh, if you're watching this on Saturday, it's officially Batman Day. Didn't know that was a day, but it is Batman Day. And with Batman Day, what's that come? A bunch of pre-orders for Batman figures, a.k.a. Todd McFarlane and McFarlane Toys. We got Noel Batman. I don't even know this Christmas tale of Batman here, but I did get the Christmas Batman figures last year, red and blue edition. Check out the unboxings on the channel, of course. But we got a Noel Batman coming. They also announced an Amazon exclusive Bat Glider Batman. Very cool looking one, a deluxe figure if there ever was. But then Friday afternoon they came in and said, oh, hold, pump the brakes a little bit here. We're not ready to put that up for pre-order quite yet. Sounds like sometime this week it will go up on Amazon. I'm going to play the long game on this one because it'll probably be $50, $60. I'm going to wait till like Thanksgiving or Christmas. Wait for one of those flash sales and I'll dive in, swoop in, get that one there. That's my plan, at least as of right now. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, gold label McFarland Toy Store exclusive Vampire Batman like Patina Edition. Once again, Todd getting all these repaints out there. I love that Vampire Batman. A very controversial Batman here on this channel, as most do know, is it did break in the unboxing with just a simple move, so that was pretty unfortunate. We did a retake, we tried it again, had better luck the second time around. But now we get a gold label version, McFarland Toy Store. Probably going to pick that one up. I like that vampire line a whole lot. We also had the final Batman, or two more Batmans. Jeez, not even one left, two left. Batman Beyond Batman, not terribly different than the gold label that's out there right now, at least to me. I don't know Batman Beyond. This one looks a little bigger, a little bit better than the gold label that's at Walmart stores right now, so I may dabble in this one. We'll see what happens. And then the one I'll get for sure, Batman and Ace Hound, of course. I love a dog. I love it when we get an animal with our figures. A good-looking Batman, but always good to have an animal there. You can use it with other toy lines if you want to. You get to choose your own Batman adventure. But we're not done with McFarlane Toys and the DC Multiverse. Two Target exclusives announced this week. We did see Parallax Sinestro. Now, Parallax Green Lantern came out a year ago, two years ago. Pretty hard to find figure, in all honesty. Now we're getting the yellow Sinestro uh, coming to us as a Target exclusive. And we also got Commander Steel. Oh, boy. Shout out to Commander Steel. He's coming as a Target exclusive as well. So be on the lookout for those. And speaking of Target, we're going to have more Fall Geek Out discussion here in our next little segment as we move our attention over to NECA. NECA Toys, of course, all kinds of stuff going on. They seem to be ramping up for, of course, the Fall Geek Out that's going on at Target, but also the New York City, uh, New York Comic Con, Toy Fair, New York Toy Fair, Comic Con, Comic Con, New York Comic Con. Easy to get those mixed up. But New York Comic Con coming up very soon. Got some exclusives they announced this week, and it sounds like we're going to get more exclusives announced into next week, and then we will have a pre-order for those that can't make the convention, just like San Diego Comic-Con. You'll be able to order this stuff ahead of time. And some interesting things so far as of filming right now. We did see those no-good Ben Cooper kids coming back with a skeleton girl, but this time with a twist, glow-in-the-dark edition here. Have a feeling we're going to see all these redone as glow-in-the-dark as well. Got to get the most out of your molds. Got to get the most money out of your wallet. That's what NECA is saying. They're taking a page from old Todd McFarlane is what they're doing right there. But we do see a glow-in-the-dark one available for an exclusive there. We also saw a very interesting one here. Uh, Kevin Eastman, of course, Eastman and Laird, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. His appearance as the garbage man in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie back in the day. Uh, if they're going to make something like this, this is the perfect time to put it out there for a Comic-Con exclusive. Because you put this at Walmart or Target... That's not going to go so hot. So limited quantities makes a lot of sense. Very tongue-in-cheek, very cool. A bit of a deep cut, but a fun cut here with a Garbage Man figure. Move over, Duke the Dumpster Drossy. Uh, we got a Garbage Man coming in there. So we did see those. But we weren't done with Turtle Talk from NECA this week. Uh, we saw this at San Diego Comic-Con. Didn't know where it was going to land, how it was going to go. And bam, I believe it was Wednesday this week, went up for not pre-order, order at walmart it is the teenage mutant ninja turtles christmas four pack the four turtles with christmas accessories getting ready for your mantle for christmas displays good time to come out with this one around the holidays obviously here it's another turtles four pack over at Walmart, in stock as I'm filming this right now, I ordered mine that day. I believe it's coming Tuesday of next week. So turning and burning, getting it out, we'll be able to unbox that one right away. That might be one we saved to unbox for Christmas. We'll see what happens there. Or do we do Christmas in September or Christmas in October? We'll see what happens. But we do got that on the way as well. And now we go to the Fall Geek Out event. Once again, NECA, always the shining star of these. Uh, seems like NECA and McFarlane have the most new stuff out of those. 
but we did see Alf, and it's going to be a totally 80s Alf. Talk about getting the most out of your molds here. I like Alf. I love Alf. Now, I'd rather have a Willie Tanner for sure. I'd also like to have Seinfeld's mom. Can we get Seinfeld's mom in the Alf line? Uh, but we're getting another Alf, totally 80s Alf. He's going to be playing Atari. He's got a lot of 80s accessories with him. Uh, I don't know. Is there enough meat on the bone? There probably is. I'll probably pick this one up. I'm this deep into my Alf line. Might as well continue it, but I can see a lot of people passing on this Alf. Uh, the first one, I think, was the Alf that most people wanted, most picked up. After that, it got a little dicey. I think this one gets even a little bit dicier. Feels like they're grasping at straws a little bit for this one. Maybe it's just me, but Alf coming. Uh, Fall Geek Out possibly next Friday. We'll see what happens there. One I'm excited about, we saw this one at San Diego Comic-Con as well. It is the Nosferatu Black and White Edition. A little bit more in the accessory department. Very similar to the Universal Monsters Dracula, who got good accessories in the color version. But then we got the black and white one with some different accessories. And that's what we're seeing with Nosferatu thing uh, here. So it must be a vampire thing is what I'm guessing here. Uh, but Nosferatu looking good. I like that figure a whole lot. We've unboxed that figure on the channel. This one a little bit of a rehash with a twist. I'll be picking this one up. There's no doubt there. So a black and white Nosferatu for the Fall Geek Out event. Looking pretty good. He, he looks awfully dapper with that hat on as we do know. But now we keep on going. We keep on going. We're moving over to G.I. Joe. And we'll keep it with the Fall Geek Out Fest. A lot of rumors swirling uh, out there on the old interwebs that a Tiger Force launch will be next week. Who could be in Tiger Force gear? Who's going to get the repaint? Uh, my guess, probably Jinx. I could see her as a repaint for Tiger Force. That's going to be part of Fall Geek Out apparently next Friday. At least that's what the rumors are saying. Not sure who it's going to be. I guess it could throw us a curveball. It could be Dial Tone. Uh, but my money would be on Jinx. We'll see what ends up happening. Also, speaking of Target, also speaking of our good friends over at Super 7, use code KYLEP at checkout at the Super 7 store to support this YouTube channel. Uh, the Super 7 O-Ring Joes starting to make appearances at Target stores here. Obviously up for sale on Super 7 website, and I assume all the other retailers, Jay's Toys and Games, DJC Collectibles, Entertainment Earth, I can see them all having those in the future. We'll wait and see what happens. But I'd be interested to hear from you guys and gals, especially the gals, because the ja the gals out there, they love their O-rings. They love their O-ring Joes, that's for sure. Uh, but it'd be very interesting who's going to dive into this one. I loved the three and three-fourths back in the day. I would love cartoon comic book figures of three and three-fourths back in the day, but that was back in the day. Now I'm into the classified scale. I'm into a little bit more higher end, higher quality, more expensive figures, I guess it's fair to say as well. I don't know how this is going to go. The reaction didn't set the world on fire, let's be honest. Will the O-ring Will the o ring get blown out? That's the question I want to know. We'll find out what happens with these Super 7 O-rings. But I'd be interested to you guys and gals listening and watching here. You going to pick up any of these? I might dabble if they have a flint. Of course, I love flint, so I might get a carded and a loose flint. We'll see what happens. you got to think they're saving him. They're saving him down in the line to really jump sales later on. I have, I'm assuming that's the case right there. But those are starting to hit target, so if you're after them, start being on the lookout, keeping an eye off to the side for those right there. We also saw Figure Obscura, and by the time you're watching this, unless you're a Patreon member, it has already dropped. But They're doing the thing 8 Eastern, or is it 9 Eastern, 9 p.m., 8 Central, my time in the Central, uh, 8 in the morning, 8 at night. They're doing two different drops like they usually do for these Figure Obscuras. But what is it? We just kind of got a lightning background. We got a little bit of a key going on. Uh, dare I say that key could be the key to Brody King's heart. We've been searching for that for a while, as you guys do know. We're hoping the key to Thundera maybe unlocks Brody King's heart. More on that at 11, I would say. Uh, but it is an interesting one. It makes you think, okay, Figure Obscura, we're around the Halloween time frame. Last year, we got the Mask of the Red Death, I believe it was. So it's got to be something of horror elements. Could it be Frankenstein? Now, of course, Universal Monster Frankenstein, that doesn't work for IP and properties uh, unless they did get the property rights, which I wouldn't assume they did. However, like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and the original Frankenstein, a lot of these characters are free in the public domain. They've been around so long, they're public domain. So it could be Mythic Legion's twist, of course, on the Frankenstein's monster. See what they come up with there. That's what my gut tells me. But in a wild card selection, I would love to see 
one Ben Franklin. Yes, Ben Franklin. Nothing says spooky Halloween like Ben Franklin. Flying a kite with a key on it, hitting some lightning on there. We'll see if that happens. Not giving the odds very good in Vegas. This is where I turned to Mark and Todd on the couch, but as we do know, they left, uh, unfortunately. Unfortunately for them, I, I still got my dog Ace over here, my dog Lemmy over there, and no idea where Domino is. Who knows where she's at, but uh, the dogs, they always stick with you. They're always your friend to the end. We know how that goes, but if you're after that figure obscura, you better pick it up, of course, today. So you got another chance if you're watching this as it drops. And if you're into this thing, you probably already know about it. But we've also seen these re-released numerous times. Not as hard to get as they once were, but still a little bit more challenging than some other Mythic Legions, Cosmic Legion figures, as we do know. We also take a turn to the Masterverse this week. Yes, the Masterverse, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. We saw Demo Man. Now, that is going up this coming Wednesday on Mattel Creations, about a $20 price point or so. If you're still collecting the Origins, you haven't uh, abandoned the Origins and went all in on the cartoon collection, Demo Man is just around the corner. So another one coming. Uh, very excited for that one. Uh, looking pretty good for what it is. For what it is, of course, the original rendition of what we thought Skeletor was going to be, or they thought Skeletor was going to be. Still cool for what it is. I'll be picking up two of those. You know how that goes. We also saw Skeletor in the Masterverse, part of the vintage collection, it says right on there. Uh, a lot like the He-Man we got about a year. Once again, what is time? A year, two years ago, we got that He-Man. Matches that one. So there is some changes to the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive one that we got way back when. Uh, but it'll be interesting. Are we going to see more vintage collections? We've seen the Masterverse. It's part of Revolution, Revelation, Old School, New Eternia. A lot of different eras, a lot of different concepts in the Masterverse, hence the Masterverse. Could we now be seeing the vintage collection figures? We're going to get a classic Stinkor. We're going to get classics and redone of all these characters. Possibly could happen. Personally, hope it does not. I feel like the Masterverse, and I wouldn't say it's close to the end, but I want to finish off some key characters before we start rehashing and we go back to He-Man, Skeletor, Tila, Man-at-Arms, over and over and over again. But very interesting, something to really keep our eyes on in the future. Not sure exactly how this will go, but it does look pretty good. We also saw a few other ones. We saw Evil Inn. We saw Fisto. We know those were around the corner. Saw those at San Diego Comic-Con. Gotta say, they look pretty good. That's what I want out of my Masterverse. Some of these newer characters that we haven't gotten. Of course, we've got Evil Lynn, but this is more classic Evil Lynn style. And Fisto, we need him to fist everybody. I'd fist Mark Summers and Todd McFarlane if they were here today. I keep looking over out of habit. They left. They left. They walked out. I heard him walk out the front door. And once again, Todd, no pants on, no shoes and socks. He's not going to get very far, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But that's a lot of news this week. A lot of news this week. And like I said, there's going to be a second toy news. Going to cover all the wrestling news in a separate video because there was a ton of wrestling news uh, through the door, through the interwebs, whatever you want to call it this week. A heck of a lot of stuff going on. But we're not done yet. Yes, it's true. We're not done yet. Now we got to turn our attention to the album of the week. All right, album of the week time. And I guess we should start it off with, as Rob Halford always says, message from Rob Halford of Judas Priest. Step on the red, cross on the green, never take a ride in a stranger's machine, and always make sure you're burning on turbo power. And that's exactly right. Never doubt the wisdom of one Rob Halford looking like a wizard on stage. And I am going to see Judas Priest this week. I will be over in Omaha, Nebraska. Shout out to Omaha. Over on Wednesday night this coming week, I will be over there. I have meetings for work on Wednesday and Thursday. Just works great with my schedule. Going to spend the night, going to go to the show, going to go to my meetings. Just works out. I love it when a plan comes together A-team style. So I'm going to be uh, unleashed in the West, I guess is what we'll call it this week, because I will get to see Judas Priest. Priest, one of my favorite metal bands of all time, so always fun to see Judas Priest in concert. So maybe we'll talk about that a little bit next week as well. Uh, just a couple minutes ago, I just literally got home as I was working again. Uh -huh, what's, what's new? Always working, of course. But uh, one of the, my local grocery stores, and I deal with this grocery store fairly regularly, also worked for them at one time. They had a little signing event here today with the members of Slipknot. Of course, Slipknot from my area went to the high school with some of the members of Slipknot. They're older, much older than me, but same high school at least. Uh, but of course, uh, knowing Slipknot, being around Slipknot, seen them a million times because, you know, they're from this area. So uh, they're not as special as maybe some other areas, but Knot Fest is in town this weekend. Uh, I'm actually not going to Knot Fest. It's good for 
friend of the channel, David C. Anderson, has his show this weekend in Colfax, Iowa. So I'm going to make the trek to Colfax, uh, maybe even bring my wife and kids. We'll see what happens there. Uh, but he's got Brian Myers and Hornswoggle at the show. So I'm going to go to that. I'm going to support David and his friend. Also, Judas Priest is in town that same night, but I'm seeing him in Omaha making sacrifices. That's what I'm doing. And a lot going on this weekend here in town as RVD is also in town. There's also a Pro Wrestling Revolver show. Uh, Elias is going to be there. It's a busy weekend. and You can't do it all. You can't make all the towns. We know how that goes. But uh, a lot going on this weekend. Judas Priest next weekend. Slip not today. I did see and talk to those guys for a while. Very interesting. Very interesting. Maybe more on that in weekly purchases. Maybe some pictures too. Who knows? Who knows? Stay tuned to that. But now, Album of the Week time, and this Album of the Week is an interesting one, as it does come from the band Zack Sabbath. Of course, Zack Wilde, we all know Zack Wilde, is Ozzy years, and it's funny when I think of Zack Wilde, uh, when I got into Ozzy as a little kid, that's who the guitarist was. People older than me, they remember the Randy Rhodes era, and of course I remember Randy. I've heard it all, I've seen it all, I've, I've been around the block with my Ozzy fandom, of course, so I know all about that, but when I came into fandom, it was Zack Wilde, so I've always been partial to Zack Wilde. Love Black Label Society. Been a little bit of same old, same old uh, Zach Wilde and the Black Label Society for a while. Very interesting enough, they just this week had a new single for their upcoming album called Gallows. It's about what you expect from Black Label Society at this point. It just feels like Black Label Society paint by numbers, a lot of wah-wah. You, you know how it goes with Zach. However, Zach Sabbath, something extra special, their first ever tour. I was very fortunate, and once again, my work schedule worked out. I ended up taking the tour and went to nine shows in a row where Zach Sabbath opened up for Clutch. I stood in the same spot every single night, and I remember Neil from Clutch being like, what the heck, I saw you last night, I saw you the night before, the night before. You just following this around. Uh, it was a wild time, smaller venues, which is pretty cool. But of course, if you're a metalhead, you love Black Sabbath. So to hear Zach do his interpretation of Black Sabbath songs was very, very fun at the time. Like I said, eight, nine shows in a row, that was a good time. Except it felt different. It felt different from the same old, same old uh, Black Label Society stuff. And you know, one thing about Zach is his vocals, very uh, ozzy s. They really do blend in with Ozzy. So I felt he did a really good job uh, performing the songs. Since then, he's went on many tours. But now we're finally getting an official release of The Greatest Riffs. It is his cover album of Sabbath songs. Now, I was pretty worked up... Uh, Four years ago? Five years ago? What is time? I don't even know. He released this album only on vinyl. Wasn't on streaming, wasn't on cassette, wasn't on 8-track, and it wasn't on CD. So I was pretty worked up about that. I'm not a vinyl guy. I miss the vinyl generation. I don't understand it. I'd rather take a CD any day. Oh, it sounds better on vinyl. Not if you're almost deaf like I am. It doesn't sound better on vinyl. It's too much work. I don't want to be cleaning this needle. I don't want to be doing all that stuff. I get it. You like vinyl. You like what you like. You don't what you don't. My daughter, she loves vinyl. It's an expensive habit, and I hate to enable her in it, but I'm doing it. But uh, they finally put it out on streaming and CDs, all the usual stuff. So I finally got to listen to this because I refuse. I said, I'm not going to listen to a bootleg copy. Not going to listen to a YouTube rip on this. I'm just not going to listen to it. That's what I said. Well, finally on CD, finally on streaming now. Checked out The Greatest Rest. Boy, long way to get here, huh? Long way to get here, but a very good one. And Sweet Leaf is my favorite one uh, that he covers on this album here. Loves Sweet Leaf, of course, uh, but a very, very fun album to listen to. We've all heard Black Sabbath. We've all heard Black Sabbath covers, but Zach does a really good job on this one. It's definitely worth checking out if that is your thing. If you're into Zach, you're into Black Sabbath, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this one here. And it was fun. I'm going to give it another spin probably this weekend as well. So there it is, Zach Sabbath. Greatest Riffs, Album of the Week. What's your Album of the Week? Let me know in the comments down below. And a very busy toy news. Like I said, I've said it a couple times in this video. Don't want you guys to forget, or you gals, we got the wrestling portion of the toy news in a separate video. Stay tuned for that, of course, on the channel and even earlier for Patreon. Let me know your thoughts on these guys. Did you get the Kickstarter from McFarlane? Did you do it? Oh, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bell. We got videos every single day and then some. We got even more content for you, of course, over on Patreon. Patreon is the best way to support this channel. We got giveaways. We got Q&As. We got all the glamour shots. We got it all. Check out the Patreon, of course. Check out ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. Support the channel. Don't forget my book, now available on Kindle. It is the complete guide to the Jax Class Superstars series. Appreciate the support over there. And don't forget social media, SirPaul64 on the X, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on threads, and on Instagram. So for another Toy News of the Week, you know what I'm doing. I'm rocking and rolling, strutting and strolling, my way to a wrestling show.